In order to slay Koshe the Immortal, one must first find his soul, which is hidden in another body, inside of a needle, inside of an egg, which is inside of a duck that is inside of a hare, inside of a golden chest buried underneath a green oak tree. And if somehow you're still following, that tree is on the mysterious island of Buyon, which disappears into the ocean. I think you get the point. His soul is almost impossible to find, and that made him very hard to kill. Hence the name and the topic of today's episode, as we take a look at the story of Koshe the Immortal, and how he finally met his demise. As powerful as Koshe may have been, there are a few things he wasn't capable of, like browsing the internet without being at risk of having his details and personal data stolen, or in his case, the location of his soul. However, with today's sponsor Surfshark, you do have the power to hide your IP address from prying eyes and browse the web safely, without any annoying pop-ups and malware. You can even disguise your IP address as one from another country, giving you access to all sorts of content that may have been otherwise restricted. If you live in the UK like me, then you'll know that our Netflix is terrible. With Surfshark, you can change your location to another country and get access to all the good TV shows and movies. Maybe you just love Danny DeVito and Always Sunny as much as I do. In that case, you can change your location to the UK and have access to every season. If that sounds good, then you can click on the link in the description or use code MYTHOLOGY when signing up to get a whopping 85% discount. You also get an extra 3 months for free as well as a 30 day money back guarantee and there is no limit to the amount of devices you can use Surfshark on. So if you want to appease the trash man, then check them out. In a land far away existed a sorcerer, an evil sorcerer who terrorized the land and struck fear into the hearts of its people. This wicked man took several different forms and presented a grave threat to even the most formidable hero. He feared only one thing in all the kingdoms, and that was death itself. And so he cast a spell, one that would allow him to transfer his soul into another body, and essentially cheat death. With his soul hidden where it could not be found, he could continue his reign of terror with impunity. Koshe the Sorcerer was no more. The name people would instead hesitantly whisper was Koshe the Immortal. Many brave warriors tried to slay Koshe, but none were successful. It was the warrior princess Maria Morevna who defeated Koshe but without knowing where his soul was located, they couldn't kill him. Instead, he was locked away in the tallest tower of her castle, bound by heavy chains, and left to wither away from thirst and starvation for eternity, never to regain his power. Or at least, that is what the princess had hoped. But there are some things in life we cannot control. The protagonist of our story is Prince Ivan, one of four children. Before his father died, he made Ivan swear that he would look after his three sisters and ensure they found good husbands. One morning in the courtyard of the castle, an eagle swooped down in front of Ivan's sisters and transformed into a handsome prince. He was followed by a crow shortly after, and then a raven. These three wizards had come looking to wed Ivan's sisters. After questioning the men who stood before him to honor the promise he had made to his father, Ivan turned to his sisters and asked if these were the men they wished to marry. Each one nodded and flew off to their new kingdom, leaving Ivan alone for the very first time. As the years passed, he grew more and more impatient until he was eventually overcome by his desire for adventure. 
Ivan ventured out of his kingdom with the intention of visiting all three of his sisters, but along the way Ivan came across a camp of soldiers who invited him to join their feast celebrating their latest victory. To show his gratitude, Ivan entered the tent of their leader, but he was surprised to see a beautiful warrior princess, Maria Morevna. And as you do in these types of stories, they fell instantly in love and were married. With the excitement and change he desired, Ivan decided he would move to the princess's kingdom, and all was good, until war found itself on their doorstep. The princess had no choice but to leave Ivan and defend her people. But before she left, she told Ivan her kingdom was now his, and so was her castle. He could go wherever he pleased, except for the room at the very top of the tallest tower. No matter how curious he became, she urged him to stay as far away as possible. And so the princess went off to war, leaving her kingdom in the hands of Ivan. And for a while, he did as promised. But as he grew lonely, that need for adventure, that spark that fueled his curiosity, would soon be ignited once again. Ivan waited until most of the castle had fallen asleep and snuck his way into the tower, expecting to see something horrifying, something not of this world, a cursed treasure perhaps. He swung open the door and paused, confused and a little disappointed, nothing but an old man bound in chains. Please kind sir, won't you take pity on an old man? I've not had a sip of water or a morsel of food for what feels like ten years. Ivan took pity on the man and fetched him a bucket of water watching as it disappeared in seconds. One bucket is not enough to quench my thirst. Please, I need more. Ivan fetched another, and another. Mmm, yes, I can feel my throat clearing. Please, kind sir, won't you spare just one more for a dying old man? Still wondering why he was forbidden from this tower, he fetched the old man one last bucket of water. When he had finished drinking, the old man cleared his throat. <laughs> you, Prince Ivan, are a fool, incapable of following a simple command. If it is an adventure you so desperately seek, an adventure you shall have. All of a sudden, the old man sprung to his feet, no longer weak and timid. The chains were broken. Now Ivan knew why his wife warned him. He knew of the man who stood before him, Koshe the Immortal. Ten years I have waited for the woman who trapped me here to return, and now thanks to you I am free to exact my revenge. You will never see your wife again as long as I live. And with those last words, Koshe dove through the open window, flying through the sky in the shape of a whirlwind. Ivan's heart began to sink as he realized he may never see his wife again. But his self-pity lasted only momentarily. This was all his fault. He swore he would see his wife again, Although ahead of him was a long and dangerous adventure, a quest that made Ivan finally feel like he had a purpose. Ivan travelled for over a year from kingdom to kingdom, trying to find where Koshe had taken his wife. His sister's husbands all gave him a trinket, so if he was ever lost, they could find him. Eventually, he learnt Koshe had taken her to his palace, deep inside the forest, a place few ever dared to go. Ivan arrived in the dark of night and decided it would be best to wait until he saw Koshe leave. When morning came and he saw the wicked sorcerer leave on his horse, he knew he would have to be quick to save his wife. When he entered the castle, it was his beloved wife who lay there in chains this time, 
Forgive me, my love. I have been bested by my own curiosity. Ivan apologized. You have a kind heart, Ivan, but not every day can be a grand adventure. Sometimes the quiet days are the best. Now you have left yourself with no choice but to find a way to stop Koshe. We can stop him together. Ivan smashed the chains and helped his wife to her feet. He'll be back soon and we can't outrun him. His steed is the fastest in the land. Then we must leave now. They hurried to Ivan's horse and rode back through the forest, but their tracks would soon be found by Koshe's steed. Why have you stopped, beast? Forgive me, master. It is Prince Ivan. He has the princess and they are riding through the forest. Then let us catch ourselves a prince, shall we? As you wish, master. Koshe hissed at his horse, a sign that it was time to quicken the pace. As hard as Ivan tried, his horse could simply not outrun Koshe. It wasn't long before Koshe overtook them and knocked them both off the horse and onto the ground. I told you, Prince Ivan, you will never see your wife again. But I admire your bravery, and so this time you may leave. Go back to your miserable life and remember this act of kindness. For if you dare to return, I will cut you into pieces and throw them into the sea. Koshe picked up the princess, placed her on his horse, and rode to his castle. Ivan wandered the forest for days, alone and dejected. He took a seat on a tree stump and placed his head in his hands. After a short while, a bird appeared and sat down next to Ivan. Why do you sit here looking so glum when the sun shines so bright? The bird asked. Koshe the Immortal has taken my wife. I shall never see her again and it's all my fault. And if she were in your position, would she give up so easily? No, she would try again and again, even if it meant death. Then you must try again, Prince Ivan. Before Ivan could ask how the bird knew his name, it flew off into the tree line. Ivan knew he couldn't outrun Koshe in his steed, but he returned to the castle anyway and waited for Koshe to leave once again. His wife was where he found her before, now in a new set of chains. Maria, we must hurry. I don't know how long we have before Koshe will return. Oh, Ivan, why have you come back? This time he will kill you. Then we mustn't get caught this time. They hurried to Ivan's horse and rode into the forest. Koshe's horse stopped in its tracks. The prince has returned, master. This will be the last time I deal with this fool. For a while it seemed as if they avoided Koshe but before they could clear the forest he found them, and when his horse overtook them they were knocked to the ground. Well, it is a pity, but perhaps what I thought may have been bravery was in fact stupidity. Take a good look at your wife, Ivan. It will be the last chance you get. And with that, Koshe kept his promise. He cut Ivan into pieces placed them in a barrel, and threw them into the sea. The trinkets Ivan had been given would now have their use. As they were made of silver, when Ivan died they turned black, letting the wizards know evil had overcome the prince. The eagle was able to find the barrel at sea and drag it onto shore. The falcon returned from the waters of life, and the raven from the waters of death. When they were reunited, they took Ivan out of the barrel and placed him back together the best they could. The raven then poured the water of death over Ivan, until his body reformed and became whole again. The falcon then sprinkled his body with the water of life, and Ivan opened his eyes and began to speak. How long have I been asleep for? I must get back to Maria. Rest, eager prince, the falcon told him. We found you in pieces, left to the mercy of the sea. As much as you may want to race back to Koshe's castle, 
We cannot guarantee this spell will bring you back a second time. Heeding the raven's warning, Ivan waited. He would have to be smarter this time. When he returned to the castle, it was not to rescue his wife. Instead, he asked her to inquire where Koshe found his steed. And so the princess tried something not many had done before. She had a conversation with Koshe. Forgive me for asking, but where would one acquire such a magical steed? In all my travels, I've never seen anything like it. That is because one must travel to the 13th kingdom thrice nine lands. There one will gaze upon a river of fire. When it is crossed, you will find the home of Baba Yaga. She has a mare who can travel across the world in a day. I watched her herd for three days without losing a single mare, and my reward was a horse of my choice. But how does one cross a river of fire? This handkerchief is enchanted. Three waves at the edge of the river, and up pops a bridge out of the fire's reach. And where? Enough. I am rather tired. Perhaps I will answer more questions tomorrow. Later that night, the princess took the handkerchief from the table and handed it to Ivan the next morning. She told him everything Koshe had told her, and Ivan began the next step of his journey. The wizards had drawn Ivan a map of the 13th kingdom, and so he travelled for several days before reaching the River of Fire. His horse would go no further. When he got to the riverbed, he took out his handkerchief. In his right hand, he waved it above his head three times. And just like Koshe had said, the bridge appeared, allowing Ivan to cross safely. Once across the bridge, he walked for hours, until he came across a small bird and thought to himself, It's been so long since I last ate. This bird will make for a fine meal. Please, Prince Ivan, do not eat my child and I will owe you a good deed, yelled the bird's mother, and Ivan carried on walking. He then came across a beehive and thought to himself, I need to eat something. Maybe I'll just take some of this honey. Please, Prince Ivan, do not take my honey, and I will owe you a good deed, said the bee, and Ivan carried on walking. He then came across a sleeping lion cub and thought to himself, It's been so long and I feel so unwell. This cub will make for a great meal. Please, Prince Ivan, do not eat my son, and I will owe you a good deed, pleaded the mother. And once again, Ivan continued walking. Weak and hungry, he stumbled on, until right there in front of him was the hut of Baba Yaga, surrounded by a picket fence of human skulls. He walked into the garden, and as he was about to knock, the door flung open. Come, child. Let me see you. Ivan stepped forward into the house. Sitting at the table was an old decrepit hag. Is this the hut of Baba Yaga? I have many names, but you have a certain... Royal smell. Who are you and what do you want? My name is Ivan, and I have come because I need a steed as fast as the one you gave Koshe. Ah, yes, I remember. The sorcerer. Vile individual he was. And yet you still gave him a horse. I merely made him a deal, and he honoured his end of the bargain. For you, Prince Ivan, I offer the same deal. Take my herd and watch over them for three days. If they all return, you may choose whichever horse you desire. However, if you fail, and even one does not return, I will add your head to my collection outside. Ivan nodded, knowing full well that it wouldn't be easy. Why else would she offer him food and rest before? On the first day, Ivan took the horses into the field, 
Once they passed the gate, they galloped in all directions, leaving Ivan to chase after them, a hopeless endeavour. With the horses out of sight, Ivan had failed on the very first day. By nightfall, he had fallen asleep on a stone slab. Prince Ivan, wake up! The horses are back in the stables! The bird Ivan had met earlier had come to fulfil its good deed. When Ivan returned to the stable, Baba Yaga was livid, shrieking at the horses. Why have you returned home? We had no choice. We were chased by a flock of birds who almost gouged out our eyes. Well, tomorrow disperse into the forest and do not return home this time. Overhearing this, Ivan knew she never intended for him to complete this task. The next morning, he was woken by Baba Yaga. Wake up, young prince. My horses won't take themselves out. Remember, if you lose just one, your head shall join the rest outside. Ivan needed no reminder of the stakes as he prepared for the second day. Ivan took the horses out into the field again, and just as they passed the gate, they dispersed again, but this time into the forest. Ivan was left to drown his sorrow on the same slab of stone. Prince Ivan, do not despair, I have collected all the horses. This time it was the lioness who had come to fulfil her good deed. Ivan returned to the stable to see Baba Yaga shrieking at the horses again, only this time angrier. Why have you returned this time? I told you to stay in the forest. We had no choice. There came a lioness who chased us back home. Well, tomorrow when the prince takes you out, you disperse into the blue ocean and you do not dare to come back home. The next day the process repeated and the horses dispersed into the ocean. Sitting on his stone behind Ivan flew a bee. Prince Ivan, the horses have been returned to the stable, but this time when you return, hide in the back of the stable. There is a stallion waiting. When the old hag goes to sleep, you can steal the stallion and ride away. If you do not, she will kill you in the morning. When the horses returned, they were again questioned. Why have you returned this time? My instructions were simple. We had no choice. When we entered the ocean, we were stung by a swarm of bees. They chased us all the way home. Useless creatures. I shall see that our prince remains a permanent fixture of my fence. Ivan came out of hiding in the back of the stable and found the horse. But it didn't seem like a fine stallion. It was weak and frail. How could this be any match for Koshe's steed? Disappointed, Ivan untied the horse anyway, feeling sorry. I've come for the fastest steed in all the land, but I fear that is not you. I am the fastest stallion in all the kingdoms, but that wicked hag starves me and locks me away. But why? Because she knows when I'm strong I will escape and she will never catch me. If you help me, we can escape together, and after I'm reunited with my wife, you will be as free as you desire. The horse gave Ivan a nod. Ivan jumped on its back and they rode as quickly as they could to the river of fire. Once there, Ivan waved the handkerchief, but in his excitement, he waved it above his head only twice, and so the bridge that emerged was much thinner than the first time. Behind Ivan, he could hear the screams of Baba Yaga. When she woke to find her prize stallion missing, she jumped in her pestle and mortar and gave chase. Only a fool would steal from me, boy. I will grind your bones into dust. Ivan and his steed hurried across. As Baba Yaga zipped by them, her pestle was caught in the rope and she lost her balance falling out of her mortar and into the river of fire, where she died a gruesome and rather fitting death. Over the next few days, Ivan fed the horse and allowed it to gallop across the open field until it had regained its strength. In front of him was a fine stallion, 
perhaps the finest he'd ever seen. He could only hope it was enough to outrun Koshe. He rode to the castle and was once again greeted by his wife. I thought surely you'd be dead, but if Koshe catches us then you will be. Then let us hurry and see how fine this steed really is. Koshe's horse stopped suddenly. What is it? Ivan has returned, master. He has the princess again. Then let us pursue. The steed was hesitant. This time he has a steed even faster than I. Then I repeat, let us pursue. Koshe gave chase. As he drew closer, Ivan's steed began to slow. When he was ready to knock them off their horse, it was Ivan's horse who struck first this time, knocking Koshe to the ground. Ivan and Maria dismounted and drew their swords. In a gust of wind, the sorcerer lunged at Ivan. His horse drew his hind legs back and bucked, cracking Koshe's skull and immobilizing him. With Koshe struggling on the ground, they hacked away, chopping him into pieces just as he had done to Ivan. But even still, his decapitated head was able to speak. I cannot die. I am Koshe the Immortal. Maria turned to Ivan and agreed. It is true. His soul is in another body in a land unknown. Then we burn his body and scatter the ashes into the ocean. His head will be placed in a wooden barrel left to float the sea forever. And if he finds a way to return, then we have a new adventure. We will travel to lands unknown and find his soul to end his reign. And so they did as they said. His ashes were scattered into the ocean and his head thrown into a barrel to be watched over by the eagle, falcon and raven. And that is the story of Koshe the Immortal and how he finally met his demise. But if Koshe cannot die, then what happens when he is forgotten and there is no one left to guard his remains? Surely his return is no longer a matter of if or maybe, but when. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.